Hi there, this is Solitude Ronan from Solitude Ronan Films and welcome to another double take. And today's double take features two films directed by Otto Preminger, written by Ben Hecht and starring Gene Tierney. The first is Whirlpool and then Where the Sidewalk Ends. Now these two films are available in Blu-ray in this rather nice BFI Film Noir collection set of Otto Preminger. third film is Fallen Angel, which isn't quite as interesting as the other two. This is a really nice under the radar set by BFI. It's a nice little booklet. It talks about each of the films. The prints are lovely. Each film has an audio commentary by film scholar and critic Adrian Martin. And there's a wonderful Guardian lecture where Preminger is interviewed by Joan Bakewell from 1972, which is 80 minutes long, where Preminger goes into full stand-up routine. Um, but there are times, you know, obviously he had a reputation as being a bit of a tyrant on set. And there's a couple of times where he, he bristles a little bit. But it's a really wonderful um, audio interview. He is in top form. And Joan Bakewell gives as good as she gets. Um, so it's a really nice little under the radar set from BFI of three Preminger films. So we'll talk about Whirlpool first. Jean Tierney stars in this one. And it's interesting as far as some of the casting decisions. It tells a story of... Um, Jean Tierney, who is the rich wife of Richard Conte, psychiatrist, and she has a bit of a kleptomania problem, and she's caught in a store stealing a brooch, and Jose Ferrer turns up and kind of bails her out, um, and he is a hypnotist, spiritualist, um, a con man essentially of rich women and using his hypnosis he gets her under his spell um, there's a meeting with one of his other um, ex-ladies who's now the patient of Richard Conte and she ends up dead and Jean Tierney happens to be there in her house in the middle of the night even though she has no idea how she got there this is a fun little film, but again, the casting really makes it quite special. Richard Conte, who usually plays tough guys and hard men, he is a little bit strange in the casting as a psychiatrist and kind of the straight man for all of this. And Jose Ferrer is absolutely wonderful. You can see he's playing it with a complete glint in his eye and he's relishing um, the role and then we have Charles Bickford as the police lieutenant and as soon as I saw him it just kind of reminded me of Jack Nance the old David Lynch staple and he does give this strange performance he almost has not quite full of razor head hair um, but it's getting there and he really gives this slightly strange, unusual performance as a police lieutenant as well and it's a, just a lovely heady mix of this you know, psychiatry and spiritualism hypnotism um, Gene Tierney is wonderful in the central role Again, a really good script by Hecht, who I'm not going to list all of his credits, but 
just almost it seems like every second Hollywood film in the 40s and 50s were either written by Hecht or he's got a lot of uncredited work on a lot of big films you know The Thing From Another World and Cleopatra and he's uncredited in so much stuff um, I think he has like over 150 writing credits but he is credited with writing the screenplay of these two films um, Whirlpool is a lovely little film um, full of twists and turns, odd performances um, and really worth checking out but for me the gem in this set and the film that I've certainly had the longest history with is Where the Sidewalk Ends with Jean Tierney and Dana Andrews and Streets of San Francisco himself, Carol Malden. Um, this is a really good one. So this stars Dana Andrews as a cop who likes beating people up a bit much. Very similar to Robert Ryan's character in Nicholas Ray's On Dangerous Ground that would come out the year later. And obviously a kind of forerunner to Dirty Harry. Um, I'm going to do spoilers a little bit later on, just in case nobody's seen it, even though you really should have seen where the sidewalk ends, because it's awesome. Um, but I'm not giving spoilers away when I say Dan Andrews is obsessed with this gangster Scalise for reasons that I'll go into in the spoiler section. Um, so Jean Tierney plays a showgirl in this or a singer and slash model and she is in an illegal gambling den with Scalise when they've got this heel from out of town who suddenly gets up like 19 grand in the game and then wants to leave and of course the gangsters aren't happy about that so the guy winds up dead and Jean Tierney's husband, ex-war veteran, war hero, um, who she's separated from because he's a bit of an alcoholic and beats her up every now and again. Um, he kind of gets framed for it. But Dana Andrews wants Scalise, the gangster head. And he goes to see... Um, the war hero and punches him and beats him up and I don't think it's spoilers but he accidentally kills him and the rest of the film is Dana Andrews desperately trying to cover up the fact that he killed this guy because earlier on in the film his lieutenant or his captain you know reads him the riot act takes him down a rank because he's had like so many complaints about police brutality um, he has a kind of guy on the edge he's got no family he's got he just lives for the job again very similar to Robert Ryan's character in Danger on Dangerous Ground um, so he knows that if this gets discovered he could probably end up in jail and lose his job and that's like the worst thing losing his job he could imagine so he starts trying to cover up the guy. Um, the guy's got a cut on the side of his face with a bandage, so he puts it on, tries to pretend that the guy went um, to the train station to get out of town, dresses up as him, um, tries to get a woman in the window of the apartments to kind of recognise it must be that guy. Um, and then spends the rest of the film desperately trying to cover up, trying to pin the murder of the out of town guy who had won the money and Jean Tierney's ex-husband or husband that she separated with um, on Scalise so it's a it's a wonderful little setup, but the moral dilemma is then compounded by another moral dilemma because Jean Tierney's father who 
she's staying with because she's separated from the war hero. Um, he has made a point of saying, you know, on the night that the guy died, he was looking for him. He was going to knock his block off, you know, because he'd been treating his daughter so badly. And Carol Malden, who is the newly promoted lieutenant, who doesn't go in for the violence and, you know, does it the scientific way, he is determined that the father-in-law killed him. And obviously Dana Andrews starts having feelings for Gene Tierney. So it's the moral dilemma of he's not only killed her husband, he's also going to let her father um, get the chair for killing <laughs> the husband. Um, so it's just wonderful because you have moral dilemma on top of moral dilemma. It's a very claustrophobic film. You know, it's not the usual kind of film with lots of shots of the city and kind of exteriors. It's all very enclosed in rooms and you kind of feel that, excuse me, as Dana Andrews' character as the world keeps, kind of, the walls keep coming in on him. Obviously he's still obsessed with Scalise and pinning it all on Scalise. You know, eventually he wants to clear um, the father-in-law's name, but only if he drops Scalise in it. Um, Dane Andrews is an interesting actor, because I don't think many people would say he's a great actor. You know, he doesn't have the film star looks. Um, he is more of a kind of solid, dependable guy. You know, he perhaps doesn't have that Robert Ryan rage and kind of coiled spring. Um, you know, you could argue that perhaps Ray Milland might have been better because Ray Milland made a whole career out of guys with a secret who are like desperate to keep the secret. Um, the script is just wonderfully constructed. Again, Hecht keeps putting extra pressure, keeps adding the moral dilemmas you know, Tierney in this film, you could argue she does kind of forget about her husband rather quickly and kind of grows attached to um, Dane Andrews' character. But it is an, an hour and a half film, so these kind of things happen have to be speeded up a bit. Because um, she obviously sees a guy that can, she can maybe help, and of course she's um, essentially being nice to the guy who killed her husband and perhaps is going to f end up being responsible for her father-in-law um, being electrocuted to death rather than take the blame himself. Um, it's just such a great wee grim downbeat film. Um, I don't know whether you can still pick this set up but I would highly recommend it. The prints are great, the extras are great. Um, I'm just going to go into slight Spoilers for where the sidewalk ends if you haven't seen it because I think I probably should just to uh, add another dimension to the film so it turns out that Dana Andrew's father was a thief so the reason that he became a cop was to kind of get away from that um, but as the film goes on you know he's continually going you know I'm just like my father you know I'm bad there's nothing I can do about it. And the reason that he's so obsessed with Scalise, um, who's really brilliantly played by the guy, I can never remember his name, um, but his face is so familiar. So apologies for that. I'm sure people can let me know in the comments. But the reason he's so obsessed with Scalise was because Dane Andrews' father gave Scalise his start in the crime world. So you have this whole dimension of the film as well that he's obsessed with Scalise because his father by implication preferred Scalise over his own son because obviously his son became a cop then his father obviously distanced himself from him so you've got this whole thing of the obsession with Scalise you know the scenes where Dane Andrews meets Scalise and his guys can't believe the number of times he says Scalise um, and just gets beaten up 
and at one point he wants Scalise to kill him because the only way he'll actually get Scalise is if Scalise shoots a cop. So he's pretty much willing to die so that Scalise gets put away. And in the end, they get Scalise for both um, murders, or Scalise's men for both murders, and Dana Andrews is going to get away with it. Dana Andrews is going to get away with killing the war hero, because they're just going to blame Scalise. Um, so the ending could have been really subversive and really kind of even more wonderful. But of course, in the last scene, he does confess. You know, the his boss, the captain, is ready to give him a promotion and Gene Tierney is ready to go with him and live happily ever after. Um, but at the end, the guilt is too much and he actually confesses that he killed um, Jean Tierney's husband, you know, almost put her father um, in the hot seat, literally. So obviously he gets stripped, he gets, or, gets stripped, he gets stripped of his rank, that's a completely different film, he gets stripped of his rank, he gets arrested, um, but again Jean Tierney is like, it's alright, we'll fight it together, you know, we'll make sure it's an accident. Granted, with his history of violence, I'm not sure you'd get away with that. But the film does end in a positive note, and Dana Andrews is almost redeemed at the end, because he feels, well, Gene Tierney has forgiven him. They're going to fight it as it was an accidental death. And the film does end in a kind of more upbeat than perhaps it deserved. I mean, I wouldn't have any problem with him actually getting away with it and it being so downbeat. Um, but there is a little bit of hope that there's a chance he won't go to prison or if he does, it'll just be for a short time and Gene Tierney will be waiting for him. So, I mean, I, Where the Sidewalk Ends I saw years ago, but seeing it again on this really nice print and this really nice BFI set, it's such a great little film. Again, it's got a wonderful script, and I love the way that Hecht just kind of keeps layering the moral dilemmas on top of Dane Andrews' character. Um, and yeah, you can argue perhaps a, a better actor than Andrews would have made it even better, um, but it's still a fantastic little film. And this set, I would actually highly recommend if you can pick it up. Um, I think I got it possibly on eBay for quite cheap. Um, again, lots of commentary on each film, which is wonderful. Um, and they're all interesting little watches. But Whirlpool and Where the Sidewalk Ends, because they're scripted by Hecht, they are better than Fallen Angel just because the scripts are tighter and there's more going on with them. So thanks very much for watching this double take. Please let me know in the comments below if you've seen Whirlpool or Where the Sidewalk Ends or both and which one you prefer. And hopefully you'll join me for more double takes. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films saying farewell. <laughs>